We saw dynamic young people being included into the decision-making yeah. bodies of our country. Mm -hmm. That is the president that we had. Yes, he failed in some regards. Yes, he did. But who doesn't? Thank you so much, comrades and patriots, so for coming through. So um, I'm not going to do a long introduction, but I just want us to go directly into the conversation of why we are actually here. And I know that we are in the dark season of our country. We just lost our head of state. And this conversation that we are going to have here today is very much necessary, um, especially for other young people that are out there and for the African continent at large. So yeah, I'm just going to start with uh, let, giving you guys an opportunity to actually introduce yourself, because I know that our viewers are obviously Obviously, going to want to know who they are going to be listening to. So, yeah, we will start from George. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is George Ibama Kambala, and I'm the spokesperson and head of communications for the African Deposition Movement. Uh, good day, everyone. I'm Benji Kandetu. I'm a youth activist. I'm from the Landless People's Movement. Good day, everyone. Um, I am William Mini, and I'm a political activist. Political activist. Okay, so I think everybody knows now that we're actually talking to politicians here. Political activists, they know that. So, yeah, and just to dive into the conversation, you know, and we lost our late president, and obviously he did a lot. Um, like, we all knew him, even though not all of us knew him personally and all that. What did the late president maybe mean to you? What can you remember about him? Like, yeah, we can, I don't know with who we are going to start with. Yeah, let me, <laughs> let, let me go. Um, I think uh, what it meant to me, I can't, uh, I, I didn't know the late, uh, the late personally. Mm. Uh, it was always more of a distance and nee. also through, through, through papers, through yeah. letters, because we used to exchange. Mm. Um, you used to exchange letters let, uh, with the president. Not letters, but uh, not letters. I yeah. say it's a love letter, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> about, 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 about correspondences. So, so, so we used to write uh, letters to, to, in, to, to inform him about our dismay uh. and the challenges that we, are, we, we as a country are facing. Yeah. And so, so, so on that on that level, I think uh, he was uh, he was very. He was a decent, a decent man, um. a decent president uh, that that uh, that always had uh, an ear to listen, um. and also to and also had uh, had uh, one more said open door policy perhaps maybe, yeah, because he was always willing to to engage mm. when the need uh, arises, because no. uh, between the period when we as AR were we were coming on the scene, we used to have uh, engagements almost every other second month because. Yeah. Because what we, uh, because of our uh, of our programs, yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Great to hear that. Yeah, Kanja. As my colleague George Kambela was saying mm. now, I did not know the late president uh, Hage Gingob personally. Yeah. Um, but I knew him as a leader, obviously, of our country. Yeah. So what I can really say about him is that he was a leader of class. Mm. Yeah. He was really a leader of class. He was a true politician. And um, the fact that he would not um, let any of the criticisms get to him and he would always answer so classy, <laughs> in a classy way, you know, and, and as an opposing party, yeah. obviously we would always oppose um, certain things, but yeah. he was always so classy. He had an open door policy as well. You know, so um, that's looking at it for more of a political relationship. Yeah. But then when you also have to look at it from an economical mm -hmm. level, he's really a president that um, took our country's economy, where which he got to win, it was down on its knees. Mm -hmm. And he really, really has been recovering our economy. Our economy yeah. is now on its way, well on its way to, you know, to recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, given the fact that we have also gone through COVID yeah. and so forth, you know? Fellow citizens would also yeah. say that he was a people's president. He was a popular yeah. president. Yeah. I think he was really a people's president. You would see him, he's, he would go out there, you would see him at big scar wash. He's, he was really a people's president. president yeah. And he was really a friend to all and an enemy to none. So that is really how I remember him. And I think that is how my fellow citizens would also remember him. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Um, the way I would remember the late president, um, I've met him a couple of times, a very warm man, um, a giant physically, symbolically. Um, I do believe that uh, Sunday the 4th of February was 
definitely uh, a day that no one actually uh, uh, imagined would happen yeah. in their wildest dreams. We lost a sitting president. Yeah. A sitting head of state passed away and you can literally feel the dark cloud covering the Namibian nation. Um, just to add to what my colleague Benji yes. said here, um, he took criticism with class. And I believe that speaks to his political maturity, yeah. which he gained over all these years in, in, in service. Yeah. I mean, the president uh, left the country at a very young age, um, traveled to Botswana, to Tanzania. Um, the plane that they had to go on um, was supposed to be bombed. And unfortunately, or fortunately, actually, the bomb went off before time and they made it safely out of, of Tanzania to the United States, um. gained experience after years, comes back, um, becomes the first independent prime minister of the republic. Uh, the principal architect of our constitution, a constitution that's internationally recognized as one of the best constitutions. And we celebrated uh, uh, Constitution Day on the 9th of February. We are living in a, we, we, we are in a peculiar position as a mm. country. Interesting times. Yes, because like I said, this, is not, this has never happened, happened before. before. You, you can trace it as back as uh, even in the 80s. It has never happened before in Swap. Yeah. So, for example, with Sam, uh, the current uh, the founding father is that when he left uh, uh, politics, um, I mean, uh, the presidency mm -hmm. after, after 15 years, he remained uh, Swap president for two years. Congress came after two years, and then Pamba was elected as president. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with Pamba, but Pamba left everything. Um. He left, okay, he left, and then CC said, okay, fine, um, Kengop will act as, as president until the next Congress. So those things, uh, those, those agreements that can be made. Mm. But in this instance, in this instance, uh, Congress must be called. Uh, Minutumbo must, uh, right now, she's in a peculiar, she's, a, she's in a very peculiar position. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very dangerous. Because it's, yeah. it's either she must uh, relinquish the VP position mm -hmm. and run for, for presidency and hope to God that, she, to she Karunga succeeds. That, that she succeeds. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or remains at VP and then somebody else takes over presidency yes. and then that particular person becomes special candidate. So it's, it's, it's a very, it's, 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 a, it's a very so, <laughs> crazy So now time. they are going to real run, the Menedumbo has to, 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 to run with other, to real run again. Yes, for, yes, yes. So now with other it, candidates yes, in Swapo. Exactly. So, so but like, like yes. I said, it, it depends. Um, Sisi can decide that, okay, fine, we, we, we will elevate no, she will be our, our sole candidate yeah. for mm -hmm. presidency. I mean, they did it with King Gopla uh, yeah. in 2022. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, but because King that particular point in time was also just president. Mm -hmm. So, so there's no need to open up that race. Yeah. Ah. So, 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 so the race was open up for the three. Mm -hmm. So the VP, the SG, the DSG. So in this instance now, CC can't, CC can't, can't bar people, can't stop people from running mm -hmm. for, 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 for presidency. So, so she must decide that, now, okay, fine, what am I going to do? Am I retaining so, vice am I presidency and, 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 or am I relinquishing and running for presidency well, head on? And she can't do both. No, she, she can't do she both cannot do because both. of the zebra, zebra style, style, that, style that, they, that they have. So it, it's very interesting times. You can see yeah. people, everybody is now scrambling. It's, yeah. People yeah. are showing their true colors. You know, um, as Netumbo was the endorsed presidential candidate yeah. initially, mm. but because of this unexpected... Yeah. Um, thing that happened, mm. people are now starting to scramble, scramble. for this position. Um, as you can see, the Jerry Akanjos are just throwing these um, statements, yeah, statements out there, you know, which is very concerning because um, in, in, in his statement, he never um, really elaborated or substantiated yeah. on why he is saying that women must not um, take part in these elections yeah. or this upcoming Congress. He didn't really substantiate on the zebra um, style, style that my yeah. colleague here was explaining. So it's very concerning when um, a prominent figure like him says such... Um, just blatant statements of women not should not um, run. run in elections. It really perpetuates um, gender inequality yeah, as well exactly. in our country. You know, especially as a country that has a high rate of gender-based violence. So I feel like it really perpetuates that. You know, it, he's not breaking down the gender stereotypes yeah. with that statement. So any layman can take that statement and really change it to something negative. So it, 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 it's really unprogressive yeah. for our country because, you know, we have always um, 
had an inclusive and a, a representative democracy. That is what we have been um, championing, championing for. Yeah. So it, it's very unprogressive. It's counterproductive to what we have been trying to do as a nation. That's very true. Yeah. When I ate something. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. Because as like if somebody, especially we don't understand what Jerry Kanto meant, yes. we will take it out of context. And then even though the statement that it made, it's it's not a correct statement to actually make as well. Because mm. you say that it actually it shows gender inequality and all that. And it also just shows, I think, it kind of makes sense, like from my side, since it's Honorable Jerry Kanjo is, um, he's, uh, I think they still believe, we are still in that time where we believe that women cannot lead. And, yes. and I think, yeah, I think we still, we're still living in that era. Mm. So, but yeah. Um, and then now we are going to the next election, like the next election. And then we are like, as young people, we want to, obviously we want to vote for who are we going to vote? And there's this whole confusion. So like as political activists and um, people with experience, obviously. So how will, how will I, how can I know? How can I make sure that I actually r vote for the right candidate? Um... I believe that it first starts with information. Mm. So I really believe, especially as a young voter, and most of our voters, in the, I'm not sure of the numbers exactly, but most of our voters yeah. are youth, right? So it starts with information, really getting to know your candidates. Who are, you, are you going to be your candidates? Yeah. And then you also need to, to look at the key issues that you as an individual or you as a youth yeah. face. And then you look at that candidate and see their manifesto and see, does this manifesto really address the key issues that I face? Will this person be able to really deliver on the issues that I say? I mean, that, 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 that I need or the issues that I need to be delivered, you know? Mm. Um, so another thing is also advocacy. Um, I feel like more young people should really get involved um, what young people do not know or what they do not, they actually do know mm -hmm. it, um, to, is holding your leaders accountable. Yeah. We should not just be keyboard warriors on social media mm -hmm. and whatnot. When last has, as you, you, you as a young person went to your councillor, your constituency councillor, for example, and asked them, okay, um, you said that you will be putting up a recreational um, centre, for example, in yeah. this constituency two years ago, mm. and I'm not seeing anything, any progress with that. What, what's happening with that? So we really need to also learn to hold our leaders accountable because it is our constitutional right, it's our democratic right to hold them accountable for these things. Yeah. So another thing also in um, involving youth or, or citizens mm -hmm. in general in, into voting, I feel like, um, especially as leaders, as political mm -hmm. leaders, we need to be more involved in civic engagement. So we need mm -hmm. to engage the community in civic engagement teaching them about their voting rights, teaching them what basic rights or needs they have and what rights they do have to demand these things. So we really need civic engagement and we really need stakeholders to also fund some of these organizations that um, are all about empowering the people and giving the civic engagement. Yeah. So yeah, we really need to all work together in order to really tackle the key That's issues and vote for the right candidate, candidate. for these upcoming November um, elections. Yeah. Uh, um, see, with me is that um, the President Gikop was, 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 was loved by many, especially mm. young people, mm. because he was charismatic. Yeah. Uh, I remember even though I was expelled in, um, <laughs> suspended under <laughs> suspension, <laughs> when I was suspended in 2014, yeah. um, you know, if you don't like the person, but the guy, but the person is just charismatic. So ah. you, you find yourself, we found, we found, we found, we found ourselves at um, at um, at Samuel Stadium that time when uh, when he was um, with the uh, the star rally. Mm. You don't like the person speaking, but you're just there looking at the person. <laughs> like, hey. So 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 young people. So what I'm trying to say is that with with us young people, that you must find somebody that relates to you. Mm. Somebody that not only relates to you in terms of uh, of, of, of of charisma, mm. but somebody that relates to you in terms of your issues. Mm. 
you know, you, you, we all know, we all share the same issues. Yeah. We all share the same issues, but, but it's only one person that's able to address them. Yeah. So you must make sure that that particular person is able to, is, is, is also championing your cause. You can't be homeless and then somebody is running, but, but there is, there is no talking about building more houses. Yeah. But you are supporting that particular person. It's about how you supporting somebody that, that, that does not relate to you. There is no, in the manifesto, there is nothing about housing. But you're already homeless. So now how, how do you expect yourself exactly. to get out of, out of, out of poverty? If somebody is, is, is not talking about economic recovery, is, 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 you're, talking, is, you're talking about granting young people with, with grants to do entrepreneurship. So you must make sure that whoever, whoever you're going to vote for has those, uh, has those uh, issues, uh, issues at heart that you are faced with. Meaning that if he goes into, into office, he's able to address those particular issues. And second, this is that information. We are keyboard warriors. You young people, keyboard warriors. They have yeah. Twitter, Facebook. We have the days. We have the time. The whole day. Time, day. The whole day. You can see that the whole day and criticize. <laughs> it says George Kambala. Social. It says George Kambala on, on, on the socials. Yeah. But if George Kambala is saying, okay, fine, let's meet, let's meet for a debate. Mm. Let's have a conversation. You, you, you're, nowhere, you, you're nowhere to be found. You're nowhere to be found. you rather go to to a KK Airbnb, you find yourself <laughs> at somewhere, some pub, having a beer or having a juice, whatever it is, or the dream. But you're not supposed, but you're not where you're supposed to be as a young person. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm trying to to edge young people that look, is pretty for the candidate that you are having. Mm. Go and do your research. There's information there. Some some manifestos are, are being recycled. Are, are being recycled now. Mm. It's just a cover page that's that's been changed. It, maybe uh -huh. it's a, maybe from prosperity to legacy. It's all the changes, yes, the word, but it's still the same, same old promises. So you must make sure that also these guys are not, uh, are not giving you faults, are not, are not repeating Fault, issues, yeah. the, uh, that they are also being current. Because what was happening in 2005 or in 2015 is not what's happening now in, 20, in, exactly. in, in, in yeah. 2023, 2024. Exactly. We are now talking about now uh, uh, post-COVID. People are still, some people are, are, still, are still suffering from, from, from post-COVID um, uh, issues. So what are you talking about? So what are you, talking, what are you give, going to provide about healthcare? Mm -hmm. people, are, people are unemployed. What are you doing about job creation? Yeah. We are now in the digital world. Now we, we, uh, there's no need for me to, to send uh, a mail, uh, post, uh, what, um, to, to call or something from yeah, here to, to, yeah. to China. I can just POV. send it by, I can now just communicate with the person via WhatsApp. Yeah. So, so it must be, it, it must be relevant. The person must be relevant on today's era. You must be able to, to, to address your issues. Mm -hmm. And also, it must also, must also, also be charismatic like the late president. That's why most people love him. Everywhere you go around the world, everybody knows, talks, it, it, it talks about Hagi Genko because yeah. he was charming. He was relevant at the point in time and also charismatic. Yeah. I'm not saying other things, but he yeah. was charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, um, I think um, young people's participation in the upcoming November elections is very important for demographic significance. Mm. Um, as young people in Africa, um, we form a significant majority of the population, yeah. especially those under 30. Um, when it comes to identifying um, candidates to vote for and parties to affiliate yourself with. Um, I think as young people, um, we're very naive and it's very sad and we're very easily manipulated by people who speak Hong Hong English. <laughs> you cannot uh, get up and vote for someone who is just speaking Hong Hong English yeah, well, but has right. the, 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 the inability to actually effect change. A person who's not on the ground. Um, as young people, we must start doing research, as Venji said. Mm -hmm. We must start reading and we must do away with this notion of, I'm not into politics like that. That's I don't like yeah. politics. Oh, no, I'm not voting. But, but um, I remember a statement from Elizabeth Shirera mm -hmm. in 2021 mm -hmm. at uh, um, NMT's youth quake, where he said, um, young people cannot claim rights that they do not know. And it's a very powerful one because... Um, if I do not know my rights, how do I get up and speak? Exactly. If I'm not using ground. my constitutional right to elect someone into public office, then I cannot criticize. 
because then I did not play a part in appointing or into electing that person into public office because that's a public servant. Yeah. Because if we use our democratic uh, right to vote, it gives us the ability and the power to hold people in office accountable. And in this country and in African countries, I've realized that um, we, we do not understand the power of accountability. We do not. In, 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 in other countries, and here again I'm going to benchmark with European countries because they're leading in, uh, in, democra in democracy, they're leading. Um, you will never see a British Prime Minister causing havoc today and still being in office tomorrow. We saw Liz Truss serving as Prime Minister for less than a month. She yeah. got in, she saw, I cannot. Yeah. We held her accountable, gone. gone. Yeah. Same with Boris Johnson. Mm. And that's the way that we should do it. There must be accountability. Uh, moving on to, 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 to what uh, George here said. Um, comrades, it's very important to, 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 to look at these leaders. Yeah. Look at these leaders and look at what they've done. Because you're going to see recycled manifestos. Mm -hmm. You are. Mm. We're going to see recycled manifestos. Uh, um, they're going to be twitched a little bit by, 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 by us young people mm. who are within the political space. We're going to be, mm. we, be called and we said, Koma, uh, 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 please check for us here and, and this and this. And we're going to try and make it relatable. Uh, um, but it, it will be relatable in word and in text, but not on the ground. Look at the ground. Because we have leaders in office who've been here for the past 10 years, but mm. we don't see any change. Yeah. You see, uh, unemployment is one of the biggest issues in this country and on this yes. continent as well. Um, but how is unemployment being addressed? We saw the late president implementing uh, green hydrogen. Mm -hmm. That is something that has to, to address unemployment in the next two to three to five years. But what about other people? Because the late president did not work alone. Yeah. It was a full government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so what are we saying about that as young people? Can, are we just going to sit back and say, I'm not going to vote, yeah. but then tomorrow I want to complain because Big Skawash has, 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 has vacancies and we're standing in a line of 300 to 400 yeah. young people. Mm -hmm. then it does not make sense. Yeah. We must look at relatability within those manifestos. George mentioned uh, 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 technology. Mm -hmm. And as, as, as the world, the rest of the world has moved into 4IR, mm -hmm. we as a developing uh, country, yeah. we're slowly moving in. We're slowly moving in with things like AI. We must look at how are people addressing ICT? Mm -hmm. How are they addressing ICT in schools? Yeah. How many computers are there in, in the library schools. class? How Those many are computers things. are there? Yeah. How does, how does the syllabus look in terms of ICT infrastructure? Mm. We're moving into 4IR. Yeah. We have young people, Generation Alpha, which was born in 2010. Mm. Th that's the next generation that we have to lead. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying about that? How are we addressing Generation Alpha who uses iPads at age five mm. and understands Coco Melon, who can recite mm, yeah. Coco Melon, Coco Melon yeah. who lives on YouTube, Netflix, understands how to, how to, how to, how to maneuver the settings on an iPad, on, on MacBooks, on any type of technological device. Mm. What are we saying? We're moving into another era. This is not 1985. Yeah. We cannot address the issues the same way that we tried to do yeah. then. No. no. That's very true. I think just, just before we move on, is it... Uh, he mentioned something very, very, very interesting. Mm. That's very that concerns me a lot mm. as, yeah. a, as a young, as a young politician and activist. Is that is a, is a notion of of politics is too is too dangerous. Uh -huh. Politics is too is too dirty. Mm. Is I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to vote because I, because I don't want to participate in in, um, in politics. But mind you, politics decides who you what you eat where you buy the bread, or how much you're going to buy the bread for, where the bread is coming from, yeah. yes. and who's going to produce that bread. Yes. Mm. Definitely. Equally also decides who you're going to sleep with, who you're going to sleep with, exactly. who's your friend, whatever it is, whatever you, that you do in life, that's what you're doing even now is politics. Yeah. Mm. Because somebody decided, somebody, something had to happen yeah. for us to have this conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Understand? And when we having this conversation, somebody else said, okay, fine, how much are you going to do it? Because, because these things, this microphone probably comes out of, out of China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, okay, fine, how much are we going to import it? Yeah. What's the import, import, import fee yeah. on a mic, mm -hmm. on a shoe? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Who is the, is the minister? Who is the minister? The politician. <laughs> yes. Who is the minister? <laughs> so, so, so that ballot box yeah. in November is very important. important. Decides who it decides gets everything. what, when, when and how. how. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> So politics decides who gets what, when, and how. how? Literally, it's, it's simple. That's very true. Simple. I think it's the question that you asked um, is a very important mm. one because we have to analyze things from all over. And George keeps men mentioning pertinent issues mm. and we cannot ignore them. Yeah. <laughs> um, where does it come from? Yeah. It's a very important uh, thing. Where does the bread come from yes. that we're selling in our shops? Yeah. And it takes me to uh, um, last year, uh, uh, the BRICS conference. It was the first time that Namibia was invited to, to, to BRICS. Yeah. So now we must also look at Namibia's participation internationally. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We must look at uh, our, our, our export partners. Mm. Um, what are we saying about the African continental free trade area? What yeah. are we saying about Agenda 2063? Mm. And young people must wake up and look at these things because we're living at a time where I bought bread at a shop, a home shop in Valfus Bay, and it's in a white neighborhood. Mm. I bought bread for $21. Same, it bread has gotten there, and wow. young people don't realize that it's politicians that actually shape the price that you even pay for this and bread. A, and if I have to take a taxi now, the, the taxi the, the, fare. The taxi yeah. fare. And, the, and there's a place, and, and, and I tell you, and I kid you not, mm -hmm. I kid you not, just like our oil yeah. uh, across mm -hmm. Angola. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. We can decide really now, okay, no Namibia, we're going to get our oil from, from Angola. Angola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and refine it here. Mm. Yes. So let's build a refinery here in Namibia. We get the uh, oil from Angola, we refine it here, and it becomes cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> but that decision is made by, by the politicians. Exactly. Yes. exactly. The wheat exactly. that are buying from South Africa to make our bread from could easily be locally manufactured here and produced here. But what, 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 what did it do? It goes there because politicians decided that no, these economic trades. Mm. So wow. we can easily say that so like I said, everything here, everything that we are doing, yeah. a it's, politician it's, somewhere... And we don't realize it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's influenced yes. by, by, by politicians, yes. by the people that we voted into public oh, yeah, office. Exactly. And, and, and George mentioned a very, very pertinent issue. They decide who you can sleep with. Yes. When, where, and how. Oh. Mm. On the legislative table, mm. they're going to table who you can allow into your bed mm -hmm. and who not. Really? Yes. And it's a very interesting thing because the last year was a very interesting year in terms of, 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 of same-sex marriage and the policies and legislation uh, yeah. around it. Mm. And that is also being influenced by politicians. Yeah, politicians. And young people, especially uh, uh, Generation Z, Generation Alpha, mm. we're moving into a time where people can ask uh, um, socially, young people, what's your preferable pronoun? Yeah. yeah. We're at, at such a time. So what are we saying? How does legislation look? Who is moving towards uh, progressive policies? Who is looking towards inclusion, standing on the preamble of the constitution, mm -hmm. which was drafted by the late president? Yeah. Um, are we standing on equality, freedom, and justice? Mm -hmm. who, is, who is implementing that? Who moves towards uh, the constitution? Who moves towards uh, democracy? Yeah. Who is speaking on these pertinent issues, issues. that we are really mm -hmm. facing mm -hmm. right now? Like um, how my colleague here mentioned on how now it's a norm to ask, what is your preferred pronoun? Yeah. You know, who is actually looking at that? Who is actually speaking on reproductive rights, for exactly. example, reproductive health, you know, um, in terms of abortion and yeah. whatnot? These are things that affect the, it, yeah. everyone, the, the young public, people. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. they need to really look um, who is addressing all like, of that. Like, like, like Benji said, reproductive mm. justice mm. is a very sensitive topic in this country. Very. As a democracy, um, we, the, the, the United States of America calls itself the champion of democracy, the free world. In mm. 2021, I believe, um, Roe v. Wade was overturned. Yes. And we saw as, as baby democracies, mm -hmm. Um, it opened our eyes to say, um, where do we then stand? If the free world can say, no, mm. we're not going to allow women uh, um, to have bodily autonomy. Yeah. We're going to say, you know what? Abortion is legal, illegal, 
And that's what we're going to stand on. It was overturned to say no. In certain states, it was said no. We're not going to allow women to have reproductive justice. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to stand on what men decided generations ago. We're going to say no. So as baby democracies, what are we saying? What are our democratic leaders, saying what are they saying on yeah. pertinent issues like these? Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, and it affects uh, um, SRHR. Mm. Yeah. What are we saying? And, uh, and we just to add something as well, is that look, if, if you look at the, at the late uh, president's agenda, absolutely with the, with the wife, they were very pro, pro, Pro GBV, yeah. not pro like I mean, in terms of in terms of um, combating combating, yeah. combating GBV and and ensuring that look uh, women, especially young women, yeah. get the best access health health yeah. healthcare yeah. access definitely definitely and 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 now one would also expect that as, as his legacy that mm -hmm. uh, these are. Uh, the anti-GBV uh, uh, bills is, uh, is strengthened mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and activated so to ensure that uh, young women can walk this country freely, mm -hmm. uh, dressed the way they are dressed, yes. without any, any regret whatsoever. Because right now women can't, can't dress the way they want to express, to, to, to express themselves. Because it's somewhere, uh, what someone is watching, yeah. somebody wants to, to do something to, to them. Mm -hmm. so, so as a, as, a, as a legacy, I think the current government and, and, the, one, and the others incoming in, 20, in 2025 need to ensure that this uh, certain bills that were, that were close to the, uh, to, to the late's heart yeah. is uh, 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 operationalized and that, uh, and, and that young people also are, are put to the table. Mm. Like with him, he was very, he was very uh, co uh, uh, cognizant of the effect that young people are indeed the, the future, mm -hmm. that young people indeed need to need to be brought to the table, yeah. even though even though it's not uh, it's not what we want, yeah. are not the young people that we want or wish to have, yeah. but at least he made sure that young people are brought to the table. To the table young yeah. people become just like he was an architect mm -hmm. of 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 our current modern day government mm -hmm. and constitution. He also ensured that young people also become the architect of this country's future. Because mm -hmm. without young people being at the table and being exposed to 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 uh, to to these systems and processes that you always used to refer to, yeah. young people won't be able to to lead. So so he ensured that that young people are at the center of of uh, of, 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 running, of running this government. And, and that's one thing that we also expect that the current uh, current uh, current government and, and also those that are coming after him implement. Because because. Like I say sometimes that nothing for us without us. Yeah. You can't talk about yeah. young people mm. and you don't involve us in the... In this, people, yeah. You don't involve us. You don't mean involving... I don't mean involvement by just having a, a, a quick meeting, consultation mm. meeting. But you say, okay, fine. Uh, I'll give you, for example, say, if, I, if, if it's Minister of Youth, yeah. I give you a young person, I give you a young ED, I give you everything that you need as a young person to yeah. ensure that the Minister of Youth lives up to its name. Yeah. But now you can't have a Minister of Youth and send somebody that's around about 80 or 90 yeah. mm. uh, leading the, uh, the ministry both at the ED level mm. and also at the minister level. Mm. Because these people are already out of touch. Like he said, he's now, he's now there's a generation alpha and in, in, in generation Z. Yes. For instance, right now we are fighting for land. Mm. Now, my kids can't be fighting for land. By the time my kids become my age, they'll have different needs. Yes. Probably yes. So, definitely, so our definitely. kids cannot be fighting the same fight uh, that, that we are fighting, that they're fighting for. It's not like now, same Nyoma for, for independence. Now, yeah. his grandchild must also come and fight for independence. For independence. Yes. Yes. It really does not. It doesn't yeah. make sense. So, yeah. so Nyoma delivered independence. So, uh, so, the, uh, so, so the son must come and bring uh, stability in the mm. house, mm. But economic stability. Now the other one must now bring now job creation. Yeah. So, so, so that's how it should be, yeah. and that's how we as, as a country must be moving forward. Yeah. Not taking us ten years back, but taking us forward, forward, where we are putting young people at the, at the, at the center, the that that the, uh, that the fourth industrial revolution in this country is realized. Young people should get involved in politics. So I really, really implore the young youth to really get involved into yeah. politics so that leaders can even put them in these key decision-making yeah. roles. Because we, we really, I feel like youth is the only one that can represent youth better. Yeah, we know yes. what we need. Yeah. We really know what we need. So exactly. I really implore the Namibian youth to get involved in 
politics. Yeah, that's very true. And I think I was one of the people, I was part of the people that were actually saying, no, I can't get involved in politics because politics doesn't affect me and like politics is too gen de dangerous and all that. But then with time, I actually came to realize that everything actually that happens around me, it's it's politics. So that's why, and I think as young people, we can't really question and we can't hold these leaders accountable if we don't know our rights, we don't know the constitution, we don't know what is happening in the country as well. So it's it's, it's only like it's only that young people we must actually stand up, get involved in politics. Let's read the newspapers. Let's follow. Let's research on these leaders, and we must know what is happening on the current affairs and all that. So yeah, um, yeah. The the next question that I actually want to to ask is um, like, what do you think are the actually the major issues or the major challenges that we have in our country that the next president should actually maybe address? You know, tackle like if whoever is going to take power after the, the November election, these are the major issues that we actually, in the country, that you should actually tackle. I think the first one, the issue beyond, beyond unemployment yeah. is equality. Mm. Equality means not equality in all its sense. Mm. Be it economics, be it on gender, be it on rights, mm. be it on resources, be it on land, equality. Mm. Making sure that each and every Namibian gets a fair share, a fair share of this country resources broadly, because you cannot, for instance, you cannot say that that I'm a minister, I get my pension, my 1.3, it might be, it might be that be three thousand dollars now, depending if she is going to to respect Haggis' wishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and so forth, yeah. and, and and if you are disabled, you also get your disability grant. Mm -hmm. So so this one person getting almost four grants, yeah. and it's already a minister level. So we need to ensure that these things does not happen, yeah. and that also beneficiaries don't replicate. Because for me, I think that that apart from unemployment, we need to ensure that that if we are giving out grants mm. or grants, it should not be replicated. I can't be one person receiving three three different types of grants. Mm. There must be a particular grant. I say, okay, fine. If it's if if you are if you are if you are, if you are unemployed and you have a, and you have a disability, and this is a grant that you can get standard at least yeah. at this amount of money. But I can't be dis disabled. I'm an orphan. Mm. I <laughs> unemployed. You know all yeah. these things. So yeah. so I think so, so for me the issue is equality must be addressed. Mm. Equality must be addressed. Obviously, obviously, if you address equality, then you're also able to address uh, unemployment. Mm. The, uh, the other issue is also that I want to, to, to address is also that there is a, the skills shortage in this country. Mm. We have a, a huge skills, uh, skills shortage as it comes to, to, to TVET uh, courses. Mm. You see, you, you, we, need to, we need to have a, 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 an audit, a skills audit. Mm -hmm. To ensure that we are not overproducing some some of these uh, some of these um, professions. Yeah. For instance, yeah. for instance, for instance, Yunam gladly says that no, every year we are we are producing two thousand graduates a year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the, but if you look at those two thousand graduates, then if, then if you look at those two thousand graduates, they'll say no, most are females, which is quite good. Mm -hmm. But but if you zoom now into those into those courses, where are these people graduating? Mm -hmm. Is teaching. It's nursing, nursing yeah. it's uh, business administration, yeah. it's accounting, it's, it's uh, you know, it's uh, humanities, yeah. political science, those things. Mm -hmm. But we're not addressing the engineering, the, the engineering, the, uh, the, the, mechanics. Uh, the mechanics, you know. We're not addressing those issues. But and that's where I think, I think we need to, uh, the next government must be, must, must go and look into, especially the, the one whoever's going to take over from, uh, the one that take, take over the NPC, the National Planning, Planning Commission. Mm. They must do a, a skills audit for us to, to understand where we are going. We are now starting a new industry. New, uh, new, new industries are, are emerging now. The oil industry, as well as, as, well as, yes. as, well as the green hydrogen is, yeah. is emerging now. But if we, if we also are not moving into, say, okay, fine, let's make sure that by the time they end it, because remember, 
we should be producing our first barrel of oil in 2026. Mm. Now, if we don't have a, 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 a mechanical engineer yeah. mm. that that knows exactly how to drill those 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 that oil, yeah. it makes no sense to have an industry yeah. mm. because then means that now we're gonna get again experts to come here, yeah. which appear, is costly. Costly. Appear, you know, they must come here, and and then they'll be here for five years. Five years now, with the intention of saying no. After five years, you must. You must be able to, to transfer skills. Yeah. Mm. The Chinese are here. The Cubans are here. The Russians, they're all over here. Mm. South Africans are here. Yeah. When, they came, when they came here, they were told, no, five years. Mm. And then five years, you must transfer skills. skills. But they are now, they're now permanent residents in this country. Cemented. <laughs> and, our, and, our youth, Cemented. and our youth is still unemployed. Yeah. Our exactly. youth is still unemployed because so, they are not skilled. Exactly. So, yeah. so we need to ensure that the next government, we need to ensure that we understand our skill shortage mm. so, so, so that we are able to address uh, um, our, our economic advance. Our, 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 our economic policy must be, must be guided by that as well. Mm. Secondly, is that once you are once able to do that, we are also able to sacrifice. Where do we have graduates in this? In terms of now, in mass numbers, they are able to yeah. sacrifice. Let's let's redirect them somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe um, the next incoming person mm. must address education, mm. not just TVET, but mm. education, in general. especially especially quality basic education. Comrades, we cannot say that we are implementing a new curriculum. And we have grade uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, they don't have textbooks. Yeah. What do you mean in a class? A cl what do you mean? Firstly, a class is full with tw with forty learners. Forty learners, one teacher, three learners on one textbook. It's honestly disheartening because we're doing an injustice to the Namibian child. Yeah. We cannot say that we want to empower the nation. The nation must grow. There must be prosperity. Mm. Um, economy must be boosted. Mm. But we're, we're, we're failing the Namibian child on basic education Vision, level. Yeah. It cannot be. It's yeah. a great injustice. Yeah. And if it so happens that uh, uh, they finish at either grade 11 or AS level, um, the University of Namibia is saying that they're only taking AS learners. Yeah. It's disheartening. Where must these uh, young people go that finished grade 11? Must they all flock to, to NAST IUM? Must that be it? It's honestly disheartening to see that young people um, are robbed of yeah. opportunities yeah. due to how the education sector currently looks, both at, at basic and higher. Yeah, and I don't understand how they actually managed to come up with a new curriculum if they haven't consulted with the universities. They haven't, mm. like, you know... Because that was supposed to be a decision from the Ministry of Education, obviously, and also including all stakeholders involved. Mm. Because you cannot have kids now finishing grade 11 and then the university are saying they are not going to take them. Mm. But that's what the new curriculum says. You know, um, <laughs> it's such a, it, it's confusing, mm. it's agitating, um, it's frustrating, the, the current situation that we yeah. find ourselves in, because the learners are failing. Yeah. They're failing the, the new curriculum. They're struggling to grasp it. Teachers themselves are struggling, Teachers are struggling. To, to, to teach mm -hmm. the new content. Um, another thing also is the NASFA funding uh, policy, mm -hmm. the model itself. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot say in this current economy that the non-tuition that I'm going to give Venji as NASFA is 17K. But we're looking at um, rent. Because me, and I can, take an, I can make an example, because I can say I'm coming from a small village in Beersheba where I just grew up with my grandmother. Yeah. Mm. Now I come to Ventuk and I have to pay rent. Student accommodations, for example, a double room in a student accommodation uh, um, is, let's say, 2,900 yeah. per month. And now Nasfa says, okay, the 17K, we're going to divide it up into months now. But then it still does not meet. Yeah. Because now the, the per month is now, let's say, 2.2, 2.4. Um, so now I still have to add. But I cannot add because I'm living from my grandmother's mm. 1.5 yeah. pension. Yeah, and I'm a student. And I'm a student. I must buy food. Food is very expensive. You yeah. go into pick and pay or checkers and you come out, you go in with 1K. You come out with two, three plastic bags. Mm. Mm. Toiletry prices have increased. Nivea uh, moisturizer is 210. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just be wearing Vaseline because uh, it's hot, colleagues. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it's hot. Exactly. But um, whoever comes in must uh, uh, address these issues yeah. properly and realistically. Because as young people, we're truly suffering. Yeah. We're suffering and um, our problems might not seem big <laughs> to those who are currently in power because um, our battles are different, the yeah. generations are different. Mm. They were fighting for, for freedom. Mm. We are currently fighting for economic freedom. Yeah. Um, so whoever comes in and whoever appoints uh, people accordingly to the different ministries um, must uh, appoint people with capacity. Really and people true. who understand the situation on the ground and who can who can address the situations uh, properly and adequately. That's very true. You want yeah, to just want to add something. No, mm. uh, uh, you mentioned something like Nasfaf. Mm. Uh, I remember when uh, when Mrs. Um, look at the former CEO. Um, yeah, that one. Yeah, we forgot. <laughs> I remember when Giwete was. Yeah. Uh, was was just was working in a, in a in a basement office at the Ministry of of, um, of Education back then, and I'm looking at this lady and I'm like, okay, Nasfaf, okay, good. Now you look at Nasfaf, and they are saying, I think for you to qualify, your parents should not earn more than uh, to combine the seven hundred thousand combined. I think some and the annual salary. Annual salary. So some some of our parents are single are single parents. Yeah. My mother can own can, can earn seven hundred thousand dollars per annum. <laughs> she has to take care of five of us, including but, external members of our black household. Exactly. Yeah, so you, you can't say because of that then I I I, I can't qualify. Yeah. But I understand in some instances in some instances there's there's those that 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 really make it that that really are, are earning as much, but then uh, they, they then also do get. Uh, uh, NASFAF money. So, so we need to ensure that NASFAF is reformed. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that you can't base mm, you can't base uh, disqualify my education because of my parents. Exactly. Mm. Just because my parents are ending, that doesn't the ending has got nothing to do with me. Mm. The ending, that's not my money. Yes, they must take care of me. Yes. But the issue is that NASFAF is there for Namibians, yeah. mm -hmm. for Namibian students. students yeah. So if we are going to, to ensure that NASFAF uh, provides, pro, it must provide equally across the board mm -hmm. to each and every, each and every Namibian deserves a NASFAF. Mm -hmm. That is pretty of, 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 of where they mm -hmm. come from. If we really every want to Namibian, empower yes, the Namibian every Namibian, child. Yes. Namibian yeah. student with the willingness and the capacity mm -hmm. to study yes. must the, be awarded the, NASFAF. NASFAF. Yes. yes. Because now it makes it, 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 no difference. Right now, you find the ministers are there dishing out themselves as scholarships that are meant for the ordinary person. Yeah. It's the thing. Now, in, in, now again, you also want them to also, also to, to benefit from NASA again. Mm. I think if you say that, look, okay, fine. For as long as your parents are in the uh, uh, are part of the public office bearers in that category, yes, it's okay, fine. If your if, if your mother is is, is in the employment. Of the state under the pub political office office bearers mm. in that in that sector, yes, definitely we can disqualify you. That one is, the, is the, because mm. because of the opportunities opportunities that are available to them and the privileges mm. that come with that particular position. But you find the nurse has five kids, single mother, but still they say no because she, she earns this much. Mm. She can't she, she, uh, she can't uh, her kids can't uh, can't go to schools. That's why this country owes banks and cash loans almost three three to four billion dollars because people are going to cash loans mm. to to bank loans to mm. fund to finance education, education but yeah. that's half is there getting almost every, almost every year 1.2 yeah. billion dollars yeah. to mm. to to finance to finance these people but yeah. then what happens sometimes the money is, the money is, take, uh, is taken back yeah but the students every day for example, this uh, this uh, student accommodation that's uh, that's just got open now here mm -hmm. recently, uh, just uh, uh, um, next to Chanmore. Mm -hmm. A double room goes there for five thousand dollars. Where does a student get five thousand? dollars And you know, George, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, George, um, it's for for for. So NAST, you know, refers us to these places, yeah. and I'm a NAST student. So as a young person, um, I'm looking for proper accommodation, and and I I, I visit this place. And if I describe the room to you, mm. <coughs> honestly, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It, it's actually baffling. 
because you have you have the bed here it's a bunk bed type of thing mm. you have the bed here where you sleep on mm. now I must come down from my bed and then here's my desk right under my bed and I must pay close to 5k yes huh. Our leaders, for, for instance, this, 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 a chomise there. Mm. A chomise that's where those guys have built a chomise. Uh, like la, no, 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 the, the, the mm. unoccupied houses. Mm. Oh. Why don't you turn those places into student accommodation? Exactly. Yes. You say, you say, okay, fine, I'm municipality, we have buses. Okay, fine, students, there's, there's accommodation there for 2.5. Yeah. We'll add, uh, we'll add an extra $5,500 if you're going to take our buses every day. Mm. In fact, we'll George, get... you're going too far. Let's start with the rent control bill in yes. the National Assembly. Mm. Yes, this thing. You're going too far. Let's table it. Why is it, really not, why, why is it not being tabled? Mm. I, I, for one, uh, we, we had, uh, we had uh, you're almost for the past mm. 10 years now, yeah. mm. AR now. We we've been pushing for that bill mm. to go to Parliament to, for it to mm. be. We even gave them a draft bill mm. to work with to start as a way of, of starting the conversation. Mm. Yes, but the minister is just reluctant. The minister is very much reluctant because this bill. You see, the bill does not only protect the me that's renting; mm. it also protects the landlord. Because mm. um, you find these yeah. mm. you find these tenants that are just uh, exploiters. Mm. Yeah. Who said, no, I know my, my grandmother, my mother died, so I can't pay rent, so, you, so you're now in, in rent for six months. Yeah. Now they didn't, now you are, now you are as, as a landlord, you, you are fixed, now you don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm. Evict them what to do, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm. Now also as you, as, as, a, as a tenant, your landlord is keep on, keeps on just coming into your room, there's no privacy, mm. they are just uh, all over, mm. un, unbearable. That's... There's no... Who do you run to? Yeah. To police station. Police say, I know that's a civil case. Civil business, you, you're not going to get lawyers. How much is a lawyer now? Mm-hmm. 2.5, 3.5, $5,000. Mm-hmm. So, so, so the rent control bill protects both people mm. from, from exploitation. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it, 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 it gives more rights to the tenant because um. landlords are exploiting us in this country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You find a, a, a small bedroom, maybe you can just fit a bed. Yeah. It's, it's going for 5,000 because uh, apparently it's, it's in academia, mm. in the press. Mm. No, yeah. no, no. So, our, so, so the first thing also, must, must also happens is that, that we need to ensure that the, that the rent control bill comes in. Comes yes, in exactly. definitely. Yeah. To going, protect the students also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Going back to, uh, I just want to go back to, like, to our late president, Hagegegop, you know. So like when he came in power for, like he's been in power for nine, nine years, I think. Yeah. Nine, been on the chair for nine years. So like, and at the beginning, he made a lot of promises. He made, like, obviously he, like, there are a lot of things that he was supposed to do or that he did during his tenure. So do you think he actually fulfilled the promises that he made at the beginning? Um, <laughs> that is a- I, I think I'll go last. You know? I, th- I think I'll go last. Let me, let me go. I think, uh, you see, you, yeah. I th- I th- you, see, you see, the problem is that... Um, my late grandmother said, eh? don't talk ill about the dead. Uh, the time. So I, I'm trying not to, mm. and I'll try not to as well. Yeah, it's just a strategy see, so, honest as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, no, you, see, you see, I think the president, this president, when he came in, he came in very flamboyantly. Mm. You no, know, he was, he, instead of uh, promising us just a pinky or hand, he, he promised a whole new body. <laughs> He promised, he promised us a, a whole new body with fresh lungs, new brain, mm. new, a fresh newborn baby, <laughs> pure, pure clean. But, but see, at the end of the day, we, we just got a pinky, not even a full hand. Um, made a lot of promises. I think most of the promises that he gave us did not f- fulfill. You can just mention them. Also. All right. Okay. For instance, there's the issue of, uh, of poverty and education. Uh, we only said it with the Ministry of, of uh, the Ministry of Poverty and, and, and uh, Education. Yeah. It failed. Uh, the food bank came. It failed. Um, uh, SME bank that was supposed to protect that was his baby when he was Minister of Trade. It failed under his watch. But there's a lot. Um, there's a lot uh, that that he had promised us, um, but then couldn't fulfill. Sometimes it's also because of budgetary constraints. Mm. Sometimes it's because also his, uh, minist- his ministers were also counterproductive. Yeah. I can attest to it because re- remember when we, w- when we agreed to, to service 200,000 plots, mm-hmm. 
uh, at least with him, we manage at least uh, to serve about 5,000 in, uh, in Oshakati, 3,000 in Wavelsby. Now, we're supposed to go further into, into other regions, so that you are your Rundu, your mm -hmm. Rotfontein, um, and Cape Mount Swap. Yeah. But because the ministers that time were thought no AR is, is, is winning this case, so uh -huh. they, at all levels they, they sabotaged, they, they stopped coming to meetings, they stopped uh, um, giving the, the president feedback, because then we used to have monthly feedbacks. So you were working in with the president actually? Yeah, but not closely. Yeah, not closely, yeah. Not yeah, closely, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we tried to that project and we said, look, and we wrote to him that, look, these things are not working. Mm -hmm. Your ministers here are being counterproductive. Instead of them releasing money to, to, to ensure that the contractors are paid, mm -hmm. that people are, that competent people are, are doing the job, yeah. they opt to give to their, to their buddies, buddies. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Ventuk, for instance, was given to RCC. Mm -hmm. And just that same year, RCC was, uh, the previous year, RCC was, was closed down. And then I paid no RCC as a, as a machinery, so let's give RCC the tender to go in service. Yeah. So, so because of such de uh, decisions, uh, bad decisions that the ministers have made, he also looked bad. Uh, but there's a, uh, a, a few good things that came out of uh, that, that came out of him. I mean, for, for instance, the issue of debt with uh, with uh, with uh, with um, with Nasraf, mm -hmm. uh, he 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 his emphasis has always been to turn that was into a grant. Uh -huh. I, hope, uh, yeah. I hope that the current Minister of Finance ensures that dream comes through. Um, the issue of green hydrogen, I th uh, the thing of, of green hydrogen is that uh, on face value, it, it looks a, it, it's, it's a huge project. It's mm -hmm. something that has never been done before. But I think, uh, I believe his vision of, 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 of green mm -hmm. hydrogen is, is a possibility if, uh, if, we all, if we all are chipping and uh, come together to make it a reality. Um, yeah, look, he, he tried his best. Yeah. Uh, nine years, he tried, it's, it's, remember there's also COVID, there's, uh, there, there was no money also. Yeah. So he, he really tried his best to, to ensure that uh, the country moves forward, but also only now one, one is able to, 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 to see the economic, the economic uh, recovery yeah. of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of the policies, of his financial policy that is taken. You are only were able to do, bet, it's, it's bearing fruit now, mm. despite, uh, he, he, yes. despite the failures that he has. Yes, so I really concur with everything mm. that my colleague George here was saying mm. on, on, on the things, that the, the delivery that he did or the things that he said he would establish yeah. and did and some that, mm. you know, that he couldn't. So hopefully the next leadership can, you know, take that on and, yeah. and really try and finish what the late president started. Um, and another thing that we should not um, also forget is how diplomatic the late President Hage Gengop was. He has really put Namibia on a global stage. Um, you know, Namibians would sometimes make fun of him. He flies out a yeah. lot and, you know, all of that. But <laughs> he was really strengthening our diplomatic ties. Yeah. So in, in, in that way, the, 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 on the global stage, yeah. I feel like um, Namibia now... Um, is seen as an active um, player and as a decision making, for mm. example, in the UN and so forth. So he really, really was a diplomatic person. Yeah. And um, we saw how he would address in the UN um, things like poverty eradication, climate change, and so forth, and strengthening the Security Council and so forth. So he has really put Namibia on a global stage. So, and I feel like those, those, in terms of how diplomatic he was mm -hmm. and how he strengthened our ties, those are very big shoes to fill for the next, um, president. leadership yeah. or the next president. Those are going to be really tough shoes to fill. So it, it's really interesting to watch how that is all going to play out in terms of our international relations and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I stand by the teachings of George Kambala's grandmother. <laughs> mm, leadership. Uh, I refuse to speak yeah. ill about the dead. Um, during the time that his late excellency was alive, we criticized. Yeah. Yeah. We criticized actively. We, we voiced our concerns. You know, young people got up and said, but no comrade president, 
you're not doing this. Comrade President, we deserve answers on this matter. Mm. Comrade President, people are saying that the party is corrupt. People mm. are saying you are corrupt. People are saying that you're eating SNT. Mm. We, we, we tried our level best to, to hold uh, the office of the presidency accountable. So I believe that now, right now, um, as he has departed for the heavenly realm, yeah. I do believe that um, we must give him his flowers mm. because he deserves his yes. flowers. Yeah. Mm. I don't think that we would have had a constitution as strong as this one without him. Mm. Um, I do not think that we would have had the bilateral relations with, with uh, international powers like the one that we currently have yeah. due to his leadership. Yeah. Yes, he flew out a lot, but he was the first Namibian president mm. to fly out like that, not to go enjoy or yeah. to go dance in a bar in Cuba. He went to go strengthen international ties. Mm. And that works hand in hand with trade enhancement. Mm -hmm. It works hand in hand with boosting the economy. So there's no way that we can say today, ah, President Gengob didn't do anything yeah. because then we would be lying and we would be doing his late excellency an injustice. Yes, he came in and he promised, but we must also remember that when President Gengob entered the office of the presidency, he got this country as a skeleton. The skeleton was made and he tried his level best to create flesh on the skeleton. Mm. Yes, he promised. Yes, he also failed. But who doesn't? Which African leader, in fact, which leader does not try and fail, especially a president? Yes, the plans were there. The dreams were there. Mm. Um, but we never in our wildest dreams thought that we would be having a global pandemic that wiped out our families mm. the way that it did. Mm. And even then, Comrade President said, you know what? To protect my nation, I'm going to prohibit alcohol. This is going to be a state of emergency. I'm yeah. going to lock the country down. I'm going to give young people who qualify 750 to get by. That is what Comrade President said. And that is decisive leadership. We did not see a leader, a president, who went into hiding. We did not see a president who, who turned a blind eye when young people or when people in general were complaining. We saw a president who engaged, robustly engaged. You saw young people being called uh, to state house to engage His Excellency the President. We saw young people, uh, people like Patience Masua who came from the ranks of Nanso, being appointed by, by the president into parliament. We saw dynamic young people being included into the decision-making yeah. bodies of our country. Mm -hmm. That is the president that we had. Yes, he failed in some regards. Yes, he did, but who doesn't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did not implement everything that he should have, but he still made sure to deliver. And I believe that in the past week, we have seen, we have felt the, absiden, the absence of Comrade Kengo. We have seen that we've actually lost the sitting president, yeah. a head of state that if we can say it, and I can actually say it, Without any fear of contestation, I can say that uh, uh, Comrade President held this country together. And we can see it now. Yeah. How uh, the things yeah, are happening. Just to add on, 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 on William, is it? Like I said, I agree. Not mm. everybody, uh, uh, no one is perfect in this yeah. world. Um, and President Gengop was that, uh, from a young perspective, youth perspective, yeah. is that he included, he had, he had engaged us as young people. He had made sure that young people are, are ahead. Even when he, even when he, when he writes his, uh, his uh, sort of the edition address, mm. he makes sure that young people are included, young people are put at the center of, of things. Mm. Even through his, uh, his, his um, town hall meetings mm. that used to have uh, before he stopped them, he used to ensure that young people are mm. present. If there are no young people present, he will tell the ministers, look, I don't see young people here. Let this meeting won't go, won't go on if young people are not participating in, this, uh, in these discussions. You also saw that for the first time, um, the president had uh, young entrepreneurs come in and, uh, and uh, with the first lady, called young, young entrepreneurs to go and showcase mm. their, uh, uh, their key concepts mm. that could propel Namibians, uh, Namibian uh, uh, industry or economy uh, to, to further heights. Yeah. So, you, so you saw that uh, this was a man that really, uh, that really understood and, and, and uh, he could see his, his own reflection uh, through, uh, through young people. Yeah. And that's one man that we are mourning. Mm. 
So, like I said, it's not the perfect. He was not perfect. Yeah. We all have our own shortcomings. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to young people, he really made sure that young people. For instance, he also had uh, Clinton Swarbrick as, as, as the youngest mm-hmm. governor at that point yes. in time. Yes. Last year. So, so he made sure that young people at at every point in time yeah. are put at the center of uh, exactly. of uh, of development and, and put uh, and put at the center of discussions. So, in respect of, of of his failures, mm-hmm. I mean, look. We, that's one thing. And right now you can see everywhere, everywhere in this country, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a memorial happening. Yeah, yes. that's and the so, thing. And in some instances, these are not government initiated, yeah. Yeah. Mm. are not state, are, are not, are not done by any SOE or local authority. A yeah. uh, community, for example, there's a, a memorial in, um, in here in, uh, in, um, uh, in uh, 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 the wrong location, mm. where people came in their thousands just to come in, and, and the state was not involved. Mm. There was no municipality, just community members, just say, guys, look, okay, since everybody's having, uh, people are meeting in Casa Rosalia, yeah. we all can go to Casa Rosalia, but let's come as a community, let's clean up this area here, yeah. clean up this area, mm. get put up a tent, get the local church pastors to come and, uh, to come and do benedictions and, and give prayers. Mm. Yeah. And let us meet there at six o'clock. I need to expect. And there's no chaos. And at there's all. no chaos. Mm. So True. you can see. So, so you can see. This is this is a man that is loved by all. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Everybody loved him. Everybody, irrespective of their of, of the of the political, political differences, yeah. we all love the man. He was the people. Yeah. Yes, he was the people's president. president. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, thank you so much. So, anything um, for us to come to conclusion? Like, is there anything else that maybe you guys want to address that you have not addressed, or just your last words as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you're> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, that, yeah, you can just look in um, um, which camera. Essentially, uh, I want young people to 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 use uh, President Kingcop's death as an eye opener a wake up call to to understand that this is a, a, a critical year. As he himself said, it's the year of expectations. Mm. Um, unexpectedly, he left us very early in the year. And now we can see that um, it's a dangerous period that we're entering. So in order to safeguard uh, our democracy and the future of our country, um, as young people, we need to mobilize to the polls with full understanding of who to vote for, how to vote, and to exercise our democratic right to vote. Well, um, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much, Elizabeth and team Hanok TV, for really having us. This has really been a productive conversation, yeah. and we need to keep on having these types of conversations this year especially. We need to involve the youth. We need to really be engaged on politics, things that affect us every day. So um, I really think my last words is that we should, we the citizens of Namibia should not leave our fate in the hands of others. So we need to get up and really go to those polling stations and vote for the suitable candidate that we think is going to address all our key issues. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Elizabeth and and, and Tim and and Henok uh, for for having me and my colleagues. I almost said my my team also. (laughs) But thank you for having us. Um, last word is that, uh, I mean, before, before you go vote, you must register. So, so I urge all of you, mm. all of us here, to go and register when the time comes. Because uh, all voter, voter cards are no longer valid. Oh. They have spent their 10 years lifespan. So we should go and register when, once it's here and start rolling out the registration the process so that we can vote. So because, because you can't vote without a voter's card. So let's go and ensure that we register to vote come uh, November 2024. And when our voting is that we need to ensure that you do research uh, on your candidate, uh, on your party, on whoever you can, uh, on the flower, the, the whatever it is that you're going to vote for. Make sure that uh, you, you don't get a, a raw deal. Yeah. And also to make sure that there are, that there are no recycled um, manifestos, because mm. I know po- political parties do that a lot. So, so make sure that uh, that uh, it's, not, it's not recycled information just to to get to, to entice you to vote, but it's things that are tangible and measurable. 
because uh, cause, 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 cause everybody says that, no, I want to build a dam in, in every constituency. I want to build a, a factory in, in, in every constituency, but you all know that it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not possible, it's not, mm. it's not tangible to, 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 to do that. So make sure that you, we are going to vote, you are going to vote um, right. Also, at the same time, I want to say that also participate, 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 participate. Not only through voting, but also just through through having consultations, meeting with your with your leaders in, your, in the constituency, with your councillors at, at City of Ventuk or at, uh, at your local authority, uh, um, local uh, at, at local authorities. Be informed of what's happening there in, the, in, the, in those council, in those council chambers. Yeah. Because remember, for example, if I resident of Ventuk, you must be interested in the in the council chambers. Yeah. Because those guys decide on your what on your rates and water taxes. They decide where to build the next school. They decide on where to build the next dam. They decide on where to build the next uh, toilet or water pipe, whatever it is that you uh, that you might need. Yeah. So you must be involved in every aspect of of, of politics. Participate. So don't just say that no, I, I won't vote, or I'm just going to vote it and move and and, and 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 go home. But make sure that you're also participating in meetings. Make sure yeah. that you are that you are involved in every in every in every in everything. Because if if you stay away, you you'll be misinformed, ill-informed. And, uh, and you end up misleading others. So make sure that you're informed so, so, so that you're not misinformed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Folks, that is the episode that we had for you today. So if you found this episode interesting, exciting, and educative as I did, so please, and if, because this is actually our very first um, political panel discussion that we ever had, so if you found this to be very interesting and educative as I did, please do tell us in the comment section. And if you are not yet part of the Hanok family, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to also turn on the notification button for you to be notified whenever we post another interesting um, episode of this one. So from me, Elizabeth Chilume, it's a goodbye and see you in the next episode.